Today in Apple Motion, we're going to create a patron requested tutorial from Levi Dendy. He asked if we could create a corporate looking logo background that is infinitely loopable. Also, if you're a patron, you can download this project, change out the image to whatever you like and use it in your videos right now. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option and N. Go ahead and select either the Final Cut Generator or the title. For backgrounds, I tend to like to use the generator, but it really doesn't matter. From there, we can go on over into our presets and frame rates, leave those at whatever you typically like to edit with. Then I recommend you set your duration to something like 10 seconds. After that, we can push open. The first thing we're going to want to do is add in a nice gradient background. We'll go on over to the left side where the library is, locate our generators, then scroll down until you find gradient. Go ahead and click and drag that into the group that's already there. We'll rename this group to be the background group. Selecting that gradient, come on down to the arrow tool. If you click on this down arrow, you'll see we have this adjust item tool. I'll click on that and that will give me some nice gradient controls directly on the screen. I'm just going to drag these out so that it goes corner to corner in a really nice way. Next, I want to add a little bit of texture to our gradient. So let's go up to filters, go down to stylize and select add noise. Then going to the left side, we'll go to the inspector, find the amount slider and change that down to 0 0.1. We'll change the type from white noise over to something like Gaussian noise. We'll enable monochrome so it doesn't introduce any new colors. And and we'll want to disable auto animate. From there, you can adjust the mix slider to your liking to get that noise showing up as much as you want, but this will provide us with a really nice textured background. After that, we can go into the generator tab and find our gradient colors. Now I want to make it so I can actually change these colors over in Final Cut Pro. So to do that, go ahead and right click on that gradient, then select publish. Let's go ahead and change how this gradient looks for right now. I'm going to click on this icon, which will show me all of the presets that are found in Apple Motion. And I'm going to choose IC blue, which is something that I really like. If you want to change the colors further, you can of course expand out your gradient by clicking on this arrow right here. Now that we have a nice gradient background, let's go ahead and collapse that. Right click in this layer panel and then select new group. You can also achieve that with command shift N. Let's rename this group to be the logo group. Then we can push command I, which will allow us to import the image of our choosing. From there, we'll click on import. And just like that, we have our logo in place. However, it's very likely that you're going to want to change this logo constantly over in Final Cut Pro. So to do that, go ahead and select that logo, then go over to the image tab and find the drop zone option. Change it from off over to drop zone. And now you can change this image out to whatever you like. So now it's time to go ahead and tile this in our backdrop. However, if I were to select the logo, go up to filters and go down to tiling, then select tile, you'll notice that all of these logos are very close together and they're all stuck inside of this square aspect ratio. So I need to force this group to be a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Now there's a couple different ways you could do this. One is to select that group and go over to the left side, find this fixed resolution option and check that box. Now it's been forced to 16 by nine. However, I don't really have a way of spacing out these images more if I so desire. So let's go ahead and do a quick workaround to fix that. I'm going to disable the fixed resolution for right now on our logo group. Then we can go over to our library. Inside of our library, we'll locate the color solid. Go ahead and click and drag a color solid into your logo group. Things are going to look a little bit crazy here for just a second. All we need to do is go into our inspector and change the color from blue over to black. Then after that, I'm going to select the color solid and push command left bracket to drop it down in the layer stack. What this has done is if I go into my properties and scale up the color solid, you'll notice that the logos are getting further separated apart, which is really, really nice to have. However, we do have the issue of having this black image over our entire video. There are normally a couple different ways we could solve this. One is to select that color solid, go to our blend mode and change it from normal over to screen. However, because we've applied this tile filter onto this group, this group is no longer in the blend mode of pass through. And you'll notice that I can't even enable that. So we need to do a bit of a workaround with that color solid selected. Let's change the blend mode back to normal. And instead we're going to need to change our opacity. 
However, you'll notice that as I drop this opacity, it's still kind of visible. So we need to get this opacity really, really low. I'm going to go ahead and change the opacity down to 0.01. This is going to make it so transparent that you can't even see it, even if I were to enable it or disable it. So we now have our logos properly set up. Let's go ahead and select our tile background and we can change the scale over to whatever we like. I really happen to like how two looks. Then we can also play around with stuff like the stretch if you wanted to or the angle but for right now, we'll just leave it as it is. We need this to continually animate in a specific direction. So to achieve that, we'll go over to our center parameter. You'll see that as I drag these up, it's sliding it left and right. So we want this to continually add a number over time to animate it. To do that, go ahead and click on this down arrow, go to add parameter behavior and select rate. Rate is going to continually add a value which will then animate it for us. I'm gonna set this down to something like 0.1. You need it to be very subtle. And if we push play, we now have this beautiful animation of our logos going to the top right hand corner. But how do we make these look like they're going in 3D space? That is where the next filter comes into play. Go ahead and select your logo group, go up to filters, go down to tiling, and then select perspective tile. You'll notice it's a little bit difficult to see here, but there are several control points here that I can click and drag. And as we drag these, it's changing the perspective on our logo. So you can get very creative with this by dragging these corners out as much as you like. You could even adjust the center position if you wanted to, or even the rotation. Now, what's really cool is if we wanted these controls over inside of Final Cut Pro, all we need to do is select that perspective tile and find this Publish OSC, which stands for Publish On-Screen Controls, over in Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and enable that, so now I have full control whenever I need it inside of Final Cut Pro. If I were to push play, you'll see we now have our logos going perfectly off into 3D space. Now there's a couple things we could do to really make this look even better. First, I wanna add a nice drop shadow onto this logo. So selecting that logo, we'll go over to the left-hand side under properties and find the drop shadow. Let's go ahead and enable that, then I'll click show and we could drag up the distance so it's expanded out a little bit from our original logo. Let's also increase the blur quite a bit and I happen to like how that looks, then we could drop the opacity. That'll just provide us with some nice separation from the background. I also want these logos to take on the color of the background. So with that logo parameter selected, let's change the blend mode from normal over to something like overlay. And now you can see that these logos are taking on the colors of the background. You can get super creative with these different blend modes depending on what kind of logo you're working with. So I strongly recommend that you actually right click on this blend mode and push publish so that in Final Cut Pro you have full control. Finally, let's go to our rate parameter and make sure we publish that as well. I'll click on this down arrow and publish that. And really quick before we go over to Final Cut Pro, I also want to publish the ability to enable or disable this drop shadow. So go ahead and click on this down arrow and push publish. So now you can enable or disable this or you could even go in and publish each of the parameters inside of your drop shadow so that people have full control over that as well. Now that we have all of these settings set up, let's go ahead and push command S which will allow us to save or to publish and we could just call this 3D logo background or whatever you really want to call it and throw it into whatever category you like. I'll throw it into the Final Cut Pro. From there, I will push publish. Back over in Final Cut Pro, we can just go on up into our generators like we would normally, click and drag our nice generator that we got out of our Final Cut Pro category, and you'll see it's animating beautifully. We could even go in and change the perspective on these logos or the position of them if we wanted to. Then we can go up to the top right, we can change stuff in the gradient color, or we could even change what logo image we have. So we can go on over into our browser and I'll just locate this generic logo I got off of Envato Elements. Clicking on this drop zone, I can go ahead and select that and push apply clip. So we now have this logo here, but it had a white background. So we can use a blend mode to get rid of that. The blend mode is currently set to overlay. Let's change that over to multiply, which will remove the white background. Then we can go in and disable the drop shadow. So now we just have this infinite logo of this company. You could publish stuff like the opacity if you wanted to, or you could publish the different levels of grain to get a different texture on your videos. So that is how you can create a corporate background to use in your videos over and over again. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button 
consider subscribing. Also, if you're a patron, don't forget to download this project. It will have a whole bunch of extra controls for you to use. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.